Hello, hello! Perfidious Pete here, ready for a little more fear, flailing, and failure. Or flailure, as I often like to call it. As we once again penetrate the peculiar halls of Perfidious Manor in Darkest Dungeon. Randolph Carter, as you can see, is restless, and so are we, since our last foray into the deeps did not fare particularly well. We sent a team down into the Warrens in the hopes that they might recover some portraits of long-forgotten family members. But instead, all they found was a blank spot on the wall and a devilishly handsome rogue waiting to seduce them into decadence and depravity. And not only was our trip unsuccessful, but we, you know, left Quasimodo down in the twisting passages amongst a nest of spiders. The creepy little crawlers were all over poor Quasi like an eight-legged freak on David Arquette, and they sucked his leprous ass flat faster than Renesme Cullen would a blood-flavored Capri Sun. So it was a pretty large misadventure all around. On the plus side, however, Quasimodo did kind of suck, and I'm not really the largest fan of lepers, both, you know, as a general rule and specifically with regard to Darkest Dungeon. And, uh, you know, it's not like we've got some weepy little gypsy hanging around to miss Quasimodo too terribly, so let's just chalk his death up to a little bit of bad luck and uh, sort of get on with our day. And I think really the best way we can honor Quasimodo's memory is to immediately replace him with someone more useful. So let's get here to the stage and see what we've got at our disposal. An occultist? I honestly feel we probably have the occultist a uh, bit sort of covered. That racket is sorted up. We kind of have enough Vestals, too. We have three, right? Yeah, Crisania, Lucy Pevensey, and Madeline Usher. Of course, Lucy doing a little bit of drinking, much to the chagrin of Aslan. It uh, doesn't bode well for her potential chances for a return to Narnia, but should reduce her stress, so we've got that going for us. Let's see what uh, abilities this Hellion has. Wicked Hack is good. Barbaric Yop is good. Breakthrough is good. And Adrenaline Rush, also good. I actually... Sort of like what Hendry's bringing to the table. She's a stress faster, which means she does not eat when her stress is above 50. And she has a chance to turn any miss into a hit. That's fantastically useful. Faithless? Eh, she doesn't like to hang out in churches. That's fine. I can uh, I can respect that. And she has a minus 5 accuracy to ranged attacks, which she has none of. So her lazy eye, not really that much of a problem. And since she is kind of a, uh, well, sort of a, a largish female bruiser with, uh, you know, I think uh, I think we'll name her as such. One of my favorite ass-kicking females. I think we're going to name her Brienne. Of course, Brienne of Tarth. Let's actually just go ahead and do that. And that's got her sorted. And I say welcome to the team, Brienne. We look forward to, uh, you know, turning you loose on the hound. And I, I don't actually mean Sandor Clegane, but an, a, an actual dog. You'll you'll be fighting dogs, so you may as well get used to that. We are going to head to the guild very quickly. We are a little bit low on cash, but I would uh, feel remiss taking Bree in into the dungeon with her current skills. Adrenaline Rush is very useful because it cures blights and bleeds basically 100% of the time. That ability combos very well with the heal from the Occultist, and I think my proclivity for using Occultist is pretty well documented at this point. Barbaric Yop has situational uses, but I would much rather she have something like Iron Swan or If It Bleeds. So we're going to buy If It Bleeds instead, and then I think we will take Brienne into the dungeon on what is going to be probably her uh, sort of first mission. So let's get over to the embarkation point and see what, what we've got at our... what's available for us. Well, we have a champion mission in the Warrens, so we won't be going there. One medium length of mission here for apprentices, which is interesting. Purify, and that's a veteran mission. Theoretically, we could try a veteran mission. We actually kind of have the team for it, but I would prefer that some of these folks get a crack at the wizened hag before we uh, go full on and, and dedicate them to veterans, and we're sort of gearing up to wait for that to happen. We've got Murphy, we've got Halfcock Jack, we've got Madeline Usher. What we sort of need is Doctor Strange, who's currently drinking, or, uh, yeah, we, we need Doctor Strange to get another another level. We want him to get to level two, and as soon as we can make that happen, we will probably go in at the Hag with that crew. But since Doctor Strange is not currently available, we're going to kind of scratch that one off the list. We do have a medium-length mission in the wield, however. Intriguing. Below, that's actually pretty damn good. It's, it's very good, in fact. What's this? A common charm. Minus four dodge with a bonus to stun resist. That is less good. 
And I don't really like 100% room battles necessarily in a medium. This is exploring 90% of rooms. It's difficult, but it's more predictable, and it has a better reward. So I think we're, we're probably going to try this one out. We won't exactly have our ideal lineup, and we are taking a, a fresh rookie in. Rasani is going to be backing us up in the heal department, however. That's good. We've got at least one solid healer who's got our backs covered. And I'm thinking we're probably going to take Simkin on this mission as our number three man. And, well, alternatively, we could take a... We could take a Plague Doctor. Actually, with Battlefield Medicine... Disorienting Blast is not that useful. What what have you got, Hannibal? Do you have any heals? Hannibal does not have heals. Hannibal's all offense. Alright, we're going to have to just back out very quickly. I think we'll take Dr. Moreau. He has been a, a reasonable performer for us, but we would like to get him... Where's the other heal? Embold I would rather he had, I think, Emboldening Vapors than Disorienting Blast, really. Yeah, this is a damage buff, so we're going to give him Emboldening Vapors... And then we'll be ready to roll. We're going to roll with that crew. So, Dr. Moreau is going to be in our three slot. And I guess Deckard, then, is going to be backing us up in the two-hole. Brienne leading the charge. And Chrysania will be batting cleanup for us. Quick look at our trinkets. I just want to see if we have anything that's going to be useful. A sheath. Oh, we actually we have, we have quite a number of useful things. So, let's, uh, let's look into uh, plus 10% to bleed skills. Yeah, that's fine. Let's put that on. I've been ignoring the trinket part of the game, really, much to my detriment. I should be uh, should be trying a little bit harder here. 15% damage. Nah, not, we're not going to be fighting mostly Eldritch. Blight resist, minus dodge. Me. This is Hellion only. 15% max HP. Lowers her stun, blight, and bleed resist. That's less good. The moon ring. That's really good if it's dark. No, we don't want to reduce our damage on our Hellion. Having bonus dodge for less accuracy is is interesting, but not for a Hellion, I think. We don't want to reduce her damage, either. Anything else we want to put on her? Um, That's very interesting, actually. Less accuracy, minus one speed. I think we'll give her a Warrior's Cap. Seems like Brienne should have a, a Warrior's Helmet. I mean, she is a Warrior. Why did that utterly tank her critical chance? Actually... Why is her critical chance... Oh, it's minus one crit. Okay. It's only 1%. Yeah, that's fine. We'll go with the Warrior's Cap. See what we can do for... Uh, for old uh, Deckard here. We got anything that Deckard might want to wear? Actually, Deckard's going to be scouting for us, so let's put that on Deckard. Uh, we don't want to lower his accuracy, necessarily. He doesn't need a bonus to bleed skills. Bonus to stun skills is interesting, but I really think that... Oh, it's Grave Robber only. Never mind. I was going to say, I think that would be go better on our uh, Plague Doctor, actually. But uh, it's Grave Robber only. And I think he's probably okay. Now, we could cannibalize some trinkets on uh, some of our other guys, of course, for more sort of optimization. But that's a lot of micromanagement. And honestly, I just... Uh, I'm not entirely sure it's worth the investment. So... We did have something we wanted to put on this guy. that a bonus to bleed skills? Yes. Where is it? Plus 10% to Blight-related skills. He gets a little less from healing. That's okay. There we go. Oh, that's Grave Rubber only. That's what it was. Alright, that's fine. That'll do. This team is... Uh, they're, they're, they're ready. Let's provision them out and get started. Now, this is a medium mission, of course, so we will have to camp at least once, and that means we're going to want to bring an abundance of food. And we may have to go torchless into this good dungeon, because... It's in the wield, and it's a medium mission. I'm going to bring... Yeah, you know, four is probably too many. Let's take three shovels. I am going to bring one medicinal herb, one key. Do I want to bring torches, or should we just run dark? We could run dark on this one, and I'm tempted to do it simply because of the savings of cash. I'm not sure. You know, with a rookie team, it's probably not worth it. Let's not go torchless, but we will go with sort of a reduced number of torches. And I'm going to bring... One band now. You know what? No. I was going to think about bringing a bandage, but I'm not going to do it. If we had an occultist, I would bring a bandage. But uh, we're going to have to have to brave this one without it. We do have the campfire, of course, so we might have a chance to heal. Bleeding, if it comes a problem, we can always throw, throw down an emergency camp. But let's get started here. Into the wield. I knew all these paths. All right, Lady Brienne, let's see what you got. So we've got to explore 90% of rooms. This layout is... Not really great for that. 
We got 14 means we can skip two rooms. I'm thinking this one gets skipped for sure. And then we'll skip one of these three. Maybe we can get over in that area and get a scout and see which one's going to be the most promising to not have to deal with. So we will skip this one initially, though. Decker, why don't you check out the grave? You know what? Yeah, I'm going to use a shovel. It's too early to get somebody blighted or diseased. That was probably not the greatest investment of a shovel, although it did at least pay for itself, so... What's in door number one, Monty? Nothing. Well, we should have taken that other deal and seen if Monty would switch us rooms, but uh, I'm always stubborn and stick with the door that kind of opened to begin with. Dance with the one that brung you, that's my, that's my motto. Unfortunately for me, the one that brought me is almost always sort of uh, clingy and not really necessarily attractive or nice or smart or, you know, any of that kind of stuff. Plus 10% chance to blight heals. You know what? Yeah, it's going on our Plague Doctor right there. Bam. So Dr. Moreau picking up a trinket. For once, dancing with the one that brung us. Uh, kind of paying off. I mean, sure, like I said, going on unattractive, a little bit clingy, but, uh, you know, God's getting lucky. You're pretty good. That's the one thing. If she's going out with me, she's not a discriminating shopper. We know that for sure. All right, then. So Dr. Moreau had way more stress than I thought coming into this mission, and that may turn out very poorly for us. Also, Rick Deckard does not have Mark for Death. That's real bad. So let's go ahead and have him throw a flashbang at one of these cultists, then. That's good. We've shuffled him to the front. That should push the Groper kind of out of action. Dazzling light. Let's go for a Judgment. And see if we can get a stun. Bam. Hope for the stun. Oh. Oh, that was actually the heal, not the stun. I am an idiot. Been a few days since I've played, so if we're going with some more tactical errors than usual, you'll have to forgive me a bit. Wicked hack. Yeah. Let's take a wicked hack at our cultist. Didn't get the kill. And actually, we need to tweak Murph's abilities. We'll have to do that between combat because I forgot. Decision. Let's go with... Uh... Um, do we, did we not give him Emboldening Vapors? Of course we didn't. So, same thing with Dr. Moreau. We're going to have to adjust his abilities after the combat, then. Let's throw the Plague Grenade. Wasn't aware that shuffled, but it does, I guess. So, congratulations to me for bringing an enemy I thought was dealt with back to the forefront. Why can you not hook and slice? Oh, because we're too far forward. Wow, Rick Deckard is suboptimal. We're... Yeah, this is not going well. We're going to uppercut and see if we can punch him to the back. We did. That's excellent. Let's throw another plague grenade then. Chuck it at those two. A little bit of blight. So Dr. Moreau dealing some damage for us on a long-term basis. He's going to be freaking out. We've got to get some criticals, folks. Dr. Moreau needs a little bit of stress relief. Ordinarily, we'd turn him loose with like a monkey in a cage and uh, sort of see what he could invent if we let him cross it with rabbit DNA, but we don't necessarily have those tools at our disposal. Going with the Divine Grace for Deckard. Chris Ani, you're going to patch him up. And Candy Jade, or rather Brienne of Tarth. Sorry. Sorry, Brienne. There's the criticals we know and love from our little Hellions. Nice work. Blossoms. Brienne looking for a little revenge for Renly on that one. A little payback. And can she do it again? Oh, yes. Two in a row. Back-to-back -back criticals from the Maid from the Sapphire Isles. Collect a bounty. Man, Deckard, you're, we got to get you patched up, buddy. You're in, you're in tough shape. I, on the plus side, the one thing we know about Rick Deckard is that the man can take a beating. So we're content to let the enemy just pound on him relentlessly while we repeatedly heal him. A little bit of incision for Dr. Moreau, looking to slice off a piece of fungal scratcher for perhaps future experiments. Got a little bit of chunk, but not big enough for any kind of genetic cross-mutation. Which probably is good for the rest of the world, really. We could uppercut, we could flashbang for the stun. Actually, let's go for the stun here. Try and save ourselves a little damage, and that paid off. That's going to give Bri triple criticals. Brienne of Tarth is on fire. She's gone three for three. Can be wow. They can be beaten. Very impressive from the Maid of Tarth. Very impressive. We're just going to open this ancient coffin. And it has nothing at all inside. Got a scout chance here. So this room is empty. 
And since we got scouting and have confirmed its emptiness, I, I think it behooves us to actually just uh, chalk that one, go ahead and chalk it off the list. We're going to be wandering around in the dark here momentarily, which is something of a drawback. You guys can take it. I have confidence. Darkness closes Mummified in. remains. Haunted Treasure. Of men. 525 gold. I know when I die, I'm going to insist that my family pack my corpse with riches before burying me. I, uh... I'm a selfish, selfish man. I want to make sure that all my worldly possessions go with me. And, uh... I think the best way to do that is actually have them stuffed into my various body cavities. Like a, uh, Egyptian from 4,000 years ago, so... Where, where safer than inside you? I mean, really. We kind of gambled on this tree thing once and it paid off. Let's, let's press our luck. Yep. In a very, uh... A little bit of poetic moment there, the game reminding us that sometimes a tree is just a tree. Although I think it was Baudelaire who said only God can make a tree. And don't, don't think I'm up in here that I've studied or know anything about French poetry. I don't. I just, I remember that Bill Murray said that in Groundhog Day. That's the extent of my knowledge of Baudelaire, so... Don't think I'm putting on airs or anything. It's just, uh... Somebody said it in a movie once and I remembered it. I hate these dogs with a passion that may oh I'm surprised that did not generate a freak out actually these rabid rushes are a problem because they tend to give everyone freaking rabies so Dr. Moreau is bleeding but not yet rabid and I forgot to uh yeah I forgot to uh I got to fix my abilities between uh fights there so now not only is he bleeding, he also failed to cure himself. Brienne of Tarth continues to kill everyone with every single swing of her weapon. Good sweet lord, she is possibly a Karen Murphy level of effective so far. Dog has dodged our flashbang. Which I have to admit seems pretty unlikely. Once again, Dr. Moreau failing to either heal or cure himself. Quickly the tide. And that may push him over the edge. Nope, he didn't get stress out of it. So Dr. Moreau is teetering on the brink of a mental breakdown. Although that may have been true before we brought him into the dungeon as well. I really hate these guys. Uh, Alright, how much damage can we get on a break? Uh, not enough to even make it worthwhile. Just continue your campaign of unrelenting murder. Goodness, goodness. Man, Brienne is... She's on fire. In fuego. El Scorcho. She's a Weezer song, folks. She cannot be stopped. Rick Deckard complaining about his bleeding. Just be glad you don't have rabies, Rick. And here comes some more mean dogs. Normally these dogs really like feasting on Lucy Pevensey. I'm surprised that we're having as much trouble as we are since Lucy isn't on the mission. Is everyone bleeding now? Not everyone but, uh, everyone but Brienne. Kill for Deckard, so he finally contributes something to the mission. Let's, let's do Battlefield Medicine on our actual healer. Well, for once, Dr. Moreau managed to do something positive. Let's get a little dazzling light. Now, nah, you know what? We can't afford that. Just heal Deckard. He's too badly injured. And he's still bleeding. And also, wow, I was going to say Brienne is just going to kill him anyway. But for once, the Maid of Tarth landed something less than a mortal blow. It's the first time. Dr. Moreau, I can't help but think, is going to be bleeding again. Of course he is. Battlefield medicine yourself and see if you can staunch the flow, which he did, so he'll take at least no additional damage from it. Do a party heal. Little bit of healing across the board while... Ooh. Has Brienne lost her touch? Has the Maid of Tarth come undone? Has she fallen for Jamie Lannister? What's going on? The world is topsy-turvy. Still gonna get some additional healing out of that regardless. And please, kill this guy. Thank you, Brienne. We only have one person who uh, can kill anything, apparently, and that person is Brienne of Tarth. You know, I've never had anything bad come out of a traveler's tent. I don't think it's almost always positive. And I'm not complaining about that. I'm, I'm just uh, more of an observation. And before we go anywhere, we're going to fix our skills here. We're going to disable breakthrough, and we're going to put on if it bleeds. Uh, the yop and adrenaline rush, those I'm going to keep. Deckard, let's see if we actually bought you the right skills. No, you're stuck with what you've got, which is pretty much awful trash, but we have no choice. I did not prepare well. So Biofield Medicine is still reasonable. Uh, let's get Emboldening Vapors, though, instead of Disoriented Blast. Emboldening Vapors is really, really quite good. And uh, for Chrysania, then, yeah, she's actually the one person who has the right skills on. 
So off we go then. Here's a torch, and we are full full on dark mode at the moment. I think before we go into the next room, since we uh, have scouting on it, we know there's no fight. We'll probably use torches afterwards. Deckard finally proving himself useful in addition to his one kill, also capable of disarming traps, so we've got that going for us. And this room should not contain a fight. Alright, it does not. Let's... Do we continue to wander in the dark? You know, I think that's probably a terrible, terrible idea, and we need to free up some inventory space anyway, so we're going to burn burn our torches back up to full and get back to work. Found a trap immediately. But uh, fortunately, Brienne, quick on her feet, was able to get out of the way. And I gotta say, we've been unbelievably impressed with what Brienne is doing for us so far. It's uh, it's some Mickey Mantle home run bullshit right here. She's really piling it on. Not only is she, you know, threatening to break the record for most kills in a mission herself, but uh, she's inspiring the rest of her team, much like Mickey did with Roger Maris, to uh, to perform, you know, beyond their potential as well. Some maggots. I have no doubt that these things are going to go down in a slushy pile of Icor. Not with any help from Dr. Moreau, however, who is f still fast approaching a freakout. There's a nice critical. Let's get a little stress relief for Dr. Moreau. No? Everybody but him. All right, then. So, Deckard, getting a little bit of work done for us. I think we'll actually have Chrysania go ahead and patch up Dr. Moreau a little bit. The good doctor looking a little bit peaked. And that... Grave Nibbler immediately undoing Chrysania's fine work and giving an additional five stress. That's delightful. Let's just go ahead and Wicked Hack here. That's a kill. This guy's already gone. And Deckard. There you go. No stress relief from that, huh? We are likely going to have to camp in this next room. Dr. Doctor Moreau is... Any kind of stress at all is going to put him in freakout mode. We need to do something about that before the freakout occurs. Or possibly a super freakout. I don't know. This isn't the 70s. I don't. I don't know if super freakouts are even a thing that that is still allowed to happen. Also, camping will refresh our torch, and we're not in a fantastic situation light-wise anyway. So now we do still have the potential to skip two rooms. And wow, that was a huge scout. Actually, we got a lot of uh, recovery or a lot of information there. I think we will skip this room and possibly this room because I don't think we're going to have enough shovels to get there. So let's... I am going to camp here. I think this is the right spot to camp, both for Dr. Moreau's sanity and just uh, for buffs in general, so... A, chance to steal oneself against a little bit of stress relief for everyone across the board. Now, Dr. Moreau still has some stress problems, so let's take a look at our camping skills, see what we've got here. We can encourage him for two, that's good. I have a feeling Dr. Moreau is not religious. Seems more like a scientist. Yeah, he, well, he's obsessed with killing, and uh, yeah, I would I would guess that he is probably not religious, so. Praying is interesting. That would, again, probably only get him five stress relief. Can he do anything about his own stress? Not really. Well, he could self-medicate. That reduces his stress by 10, heals him by 20%. That's actually pretty good. We will probably have Dr. Moreau do a little bit of self-medication, and I'm going to say it's probably not medicine in that syringe. It's, it's drugs. Hint, drugs. Drugs. Scout ahead normally would be something I would automatically do, but we've almost already scouted the entire map, so I'm not sure that is worth our, our three time. Giving someone plus 10 accuracy and an extra 5% crit, though, seems enormously useful, especially when that person is going to be Brienne of Tarth, who is an absolute killing machine. So let's see what Brienne can do. She can also sharpen her spear. She could revel to reduce herself by 20 and heal. That's interesting. Actually, I think we're going to have her sharpen her spear. And then... Brienne's been in a number of sticky situations in her time wandering around Westeros. So, you know, she's seen some shit. She's going to give a little bit of pep talk there to Dr. Moreau and give him some uh, chance to stress resist. She's going to give him the old what for, kind of tell him what's what. Dr. Moreau then going to self-medicate for a little additional stress relief, and then I think what we'll do is just have Chrysania encourage Dr. Moreau, let him know that everything is okay and that the world is not as abysmal as the world of Westeros, thankfully. It's a brutal, brutal, unrelenting place. Pretty sure that's all we've got going for us. So between our lovely ladies here, we actually managed to calm Dr. Moreau sort of back from the edge of a freakout, and uh, Deckard has tried at least to insulate him against further troubles, so let's go ahead and rest. Not sure being reassured by Dick Rick, by Dick Record. 
dick record. That sounds like a uh, sort of like 70s action In film. Radiance, may we find victory. Dick record. He is a troubled cop out on the run from the law. Framed for a crime he didn't commit, Dick Record will wreck this entire city if that's what it takes to clear his name. Coming this fall, Dick Record. He wrecks dicks like nobody's business. Actually, it also could be the title of a gay porno, having said that. that's uh, It could go either way. Anyway, let's, uh, let's go check out this room up here. It's got treasure in it. I'm a, I'm a greedy, selfish man. I have no problem uh, chasing down treasure. Some random stress for our Plague Doctor. That's not great. See that Mark Prey ability there, Deckard? Yeah, you really need that. So just uh, going to point out there that perhaps you should pay attention to how that's done so you can someday do that yourself like a big boy. A nice stun from Chrysania there. Let's go with the flashbang on the fungal artillery. I could have thrown it at the groping swipe, but I was actually looking for the shuffle, which is good. Deckard taking some minor damage, not really a problem. Let's Wicked Hack. Nine damage from Brienne. Um, on rare, rare happenstance that Brienne did not generate a kill with that. Let's go for the Incision. Yeah, that's actually a lethal damage hit from uh, old Dr. Moreau there. That hit proving to do lethal damage, so no objections to that. Rick Deckard's going to go for a little bit of uh, bounty collection. Seven damage to our Fungal Artillery. I think we're going to have Chris Ani and just... Uh, Soothe Deckard's troubled nerves. Deckard often curious whether he is or is not a replicant. He doesn't know how to react. I thought that bleed damage was going to finish him off. Is, is it a one point? It's a one point bleed. Ah, so then. Let's emboldening vapors. Put that buff on our Lady of Pain. And she is going to deliver what is almost certain to be a killing blow. Yep. One fewer opponent for us to deal with. Arguably, that was stupid. We should not have done that with Deckard. We actually should have had Deckard hit the fungal artillery because that guy was going to bleed to death anyway. Fortunately for us, Dr. Moreau is ensuring our victory. And we could heal, but or we could actually go for the kill, but instead we're going to heal because that guy's going to bleed to death. So he will not get a chance to do anything. Or the bleed wore off and we got extraordinarily lucky. Whatever. Just another notch in Brienne's blade. Remind yourself that overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. Do I sound overconfident to you, narrator? Because I think more I sound uh, basically terrified and concerned about the fate of our troopers at all times. I, I seem more like nervous and a little bit freaky than uh, confident, especially overconfident. Not sure who you're listening to, Mr. Narrator, but uh, you should pay closer attention. Maybe the narrator just likes to hear himself talk. I mean, I do. It's understandable. Dr. Moreau taking a spider bite there. That's not good. Rick Deckard getting spit upon. And let's face it, no one likes that. So it's going to be battlefield medicine then. Let's see if we can cure Deckard. Nope, didn't heal him, didn't cure him. And one thing I'd like to point out, Dr. Moreau, when he does throw uh, battlefield medicine, it works on himself as well. So he can heal um, not, just, uh, not just his target, but also himself. It is a chance to cure both. Kill from Deckard there. Impressive. We're going to go with If It Bleeds on the one guy who hasn't gone yet. And Brienne getting us a cheap kill there. Let's go for the party heal from Crisania. A couple guys that are injured. We've got some blights and bleeds stacked up. So a little preventive medicine there. Crisania stunned and marked. That is unfortunate. Can you If It Bleeds that guy? You can. Well, go ahead and do so. Another kill for Brienne. Every single swing of her weapon is just another dead man. Oh. Alright, see, there's the double cure, and that just leaves Deckard to close things out for us. So that went pretty darn well. And hey, treasure. As victories mount, oh, we don't have enough room for these resistance. deeds, so we've got to get rid of something. Let's get rid of this holy water. I don't anticipate needing that, and I would much rather have the uh, two deeds than the holy water. We could have gotten rid of this key, because we're going to use the key right here anyway. Why or that 25 gold probably would have been. Maybe a good choice. Alright then, so back we go. A little bit of uh, covering our own tracks again. Now, just to point out when I say about backtracking, backtracking actually means doing this. Li literally walking backwards, and that gets you stress, which is what the quirk that ignores backtracking stress does. But you do also get stress from covering ground you've already covered, just because every time you move through a tidal, there is a, a small chance that you just randomly get stress. So it's 
It's best to avoid backtracking like walking backwards because that, that actually piles on stress quite a bit faster, but covering ground you've already covered also adds additional stress. So it's sort of best to try and avoid... I did not want to do that. I actually wanted to go that way. Oh, no, what? We'll skip both of those rooms. Never mind. We can just skip them both. That'll still work. All right, so let's use our last shovel. If Deckard, Rickard, Deckard will shut up about the treasure he senses ahead. Deckard's treasure cat senses are tingling sharply. Oh, he's a treasure cat. And seriously, if you still haven't checked out Mr. Wong, you got to check out Mr. Wong, man. Really. It really is that good. Uh, what to discard? This, you know what? We're going to discard 25 gold. In the grand scheme of things, 25 gold is not really worth much. And I'm going to burn a couple. Yeah, I'm actually going to burn both the of these light, torches. The promise of safety. If we have to run out of something or discard something, I'm comfortable discarding torches. So they have really no additional value. Now, we have checked out all these other rooms, right? Um, we started here. Yep, yeah, okay. So we can still skip those two and complete our mission. Good. We only have one shovel left, so I'd like to try and avoid going that way if at all possible. There's a hunger prompt. Hopefully we do not get another one of those before the end of the dungeon. We are only two food left, so that would be very, very bad. But we picked up two food. Excellent. That will that is a nice balance. And since we picked up the two food there, I'm actually going to discard our medicine. I don't guess we'll get... My hunch is we won't have... A, if we have one more prompt for hunger, we, we definitely won't have two prompts. That's just pretty unlikely. All right, so this is going to be end of mission, and we may have uh, sort of escaped through here unscathed. Let's try a torch on the eerie spider web. Eh, it didn't do anything. I don't think a shovel is going to do anything, so let's just have him check it out. Just a cobweb. Actually, when I was a kid, I knew a kid who used to eat cobwebs to freak us out. It was really one of the most horrifically awful things I've ever seen. And I'm, I'm pretty sure there's nothing harmful like eating a cobweb. I don't think it has any kind of drawbacks. But just watching someone eat a cobweb, it was deeply disturbing. And, uh... He did it, like I said, just used to do it to freak us out. And, man, it worked. Just, it, uh, it was horrible. If you ever see someone eating cobwebs, run away. Just run, run. Good haul of loot there. Almost 10,000, actually, more almost 11,000 total gold for that mission, as well as a uh, sort of a legendary trinket. So pretty darn nice little haul of loot as things stand overall. And I think we may have come out of this mission with less stress than we had going in. Pretty successful little run, and I say all credit for that success definitively goes to Brienne of Tarth. She was uh, an unrelenting, just unrelenting brutal murderer, and the plus three melee crit is, is actually a huge bonus. The penalty to stress resist in the ruins is somewhat bad, but we'll just try and avoid taking Brienne into the ruins. Warren's adventure for Deckard is positive. A Blutomania. Nymphomania means he only goes to the brothel. No, he gets extra, okay, extra stress heal while in the brothel. That's good. We might send Dr. Moreau to the brothel. He's obsessed with cleanliness, which, you know, that doesn't really seem like that much of a drawback for someone who is a doctor. I, I sort of would demand that my doctors be obsessed with cleanliness if I had the option. Just, you know, seems like a bad idea if you go to your there doctor and his hands are encrusted with blood and filth from other patients. That's probably not healthy. Chaos. Must be oh, sweet God, Lucy is never, ever, ever going to get back into Narnia. She's on a bender, folks. She's gone missing. Not even Susan is going to be able to track her down, and we all know how the God Lion feels about Susan, and if... Oh, Lucy. You were once the most beloved of Aslan, and now you shall never again know his grace. How dare you have a drunken evening on the town, ma'am? How dare you? Django Fett finally got rid of the stress he had from... The last horrific mission we took him on, but he's still got more than a little. Lucy's patched up. Doctor Strange. One would have thought Doctor Strange would have uh, done a little bit better with regard to meditation. I would have guessed that he would have been uh, seen a little more benefit from that. But uh, we do have uh, some extra deeds here and portraits. So let's see about how best to invest those. It's going to be down to our blacksmith, I have a feeling. And we don't quite have enough deeds to upgrade yet again. And I do want to try and get rank 3 weapons and armor. We could upgrade our furnace, which is in... You know what? Yeah, I think that's actually our best bet. We're going to upgrade the furnace. That's a good use of our deeds. And let's take a look and see if there are any other upgrades. I wouldn't mind upgrading some of our tavern a bit as well. Now, we do have six portraits. But it seems like I was saving portraits for something. What was that? Was it the guild? It was the guild. 
Yeah, we're saving up our portraits for Instructor Mastery, so we don't want to use those. Our Sanitarium could still use a few upgrades as well, and we could upgrade uh, the Treatment Library to reduce the cost even further. And we can already treat two people, so I'm not really worried about upgrading that again. We don't really have a much else use, I think, for Cress and Shields at the moment, anyway. Let's go to the Abbey and look at upgrades there. Okay, we've upgraded almost nothing in our Abbey, so let's... Let's get that started. We have plenty of crests. We have plenty of uh, busts. So let's do... We've upgraded everything, and I think we'll upgrade the cloister. And now we're out of busts, so... That'll be fine. We have not upgraded our survivalist or even looked at our survivalist at all. Ah, sure, why not? We could have also used those on our gypsy wagon, but I'm not a huge fan of the idea of paying gold for trinkets. You get plenty of trinkets, and it seems like paying for them is just... Somewhat wasteful. Let's do a couple upgrades very quickly, though. Everybody, we're looking at weapons and armor here, largely. Um, first things first, though. Deckard, you have got to go to the training hall, and you have got to learn Mark for Death, sir. Must That must be on your, uh, amongst your roster of abilities. A bounty hunter without Mark for Death is somewhat less useful than we'd like. I also want Finish Him, because it's fantastic. And, you know, Deckard's been around long enough, I think we can probably afford to upgrade his skills. The only trick is going to be remembering to change them after our next trip. And Brienne of Tarth, she absolutely merits all the upgrades we can give her. So, Wicked Hack. You know, I really like Iron Swan as well. I do really like Iron Swan a lot. I'm not a huge fan of Breakthrough. Bleed Out, though, is also very good. I think we're going to get Iron Swan. We're going to go with Wicked Hack, Iron Swan, If It Bleeds, and Adrenaline Rush as her primary abilities. And then we're going to take Brienne down to the armor as well, and she's going full-on upgrades here. We're going to give Brienne the best armor and weapons we have available. We're going to be relying on Brienne pretty heavily in the very near future, so I want to get her upgraded as much as we can. And do we like Jenga or... You know what, let's first off, before so I just so I don't forget... Let's go ahead and fix his abilities first. Get Deckard sorted, and we picked up a... Let's take a look at bad traits. We might send somebody to the sanitarium. If somebody has a trait we want to really get rid of, let's let's take the opportunity to do that now. Particularly for Roderick or Randolph, we can get rid of either one of there if they have a, a very bad trait. But don't, you know what? Roderick actually is uh, probably okay. Uh, Randolph Carter. Guy is a mental brick. He's just, uh, just unshakable. None of these are terribly bad. Half cock Jackie uh, misses the spot is actually kind of terrible. Not sure it warrants an immediate removal, but that is a problem. She will only drink, she can't gamble. She's obsessed with food, manic for money. Slow reflexes kind of sucks, but it's not a huge drawback. Lucy Pevensey is MIA, so, you know. Shocker. Yeah. Penalty to stun resist is bad, but not necessarily a deal. Oh, well, here we go. Doctor Strange is going to be... Yeah, he has a ton of negative... He has, well, he has Lockjaw. We've got to get that fixed. So let's get uh, Doc Strange into the sanitarium immediately. we got to get rid of Lockjaw. And probably slow draw as well, to be honest. But I think we'll wait on that until we have an opportunity to earn a little bit more cash. So, sort of tapped out for resources then. All our upgrades finished. I think we'll go ahead and wrap things up. Of course, if you enjoyed the episode, feel free to drop a like down in the comments section. And if you'd like to see more Darkest Dungeon three times a week, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, consider subscribing as well. And we will see you again soon for a little more Brienne of Tarth-inspired melee mutilation. Thanks for watching.